Mr. Hicks entered a plea to operating while intoxicated. First offense, not high BAC, not second offense. The matter was set for sentencing here this morning. Uh, Ms. Kiefer has prepared the screening report. Bottom. You just sent that to me. The op Let me look at the notes. Was the open intox dismissed, Luke? No, Judge. No, it was not. Um, There's Hicks. two cases, 23-1304 and 23-1306. Yeah. All right. So the open intox is also part of this. So I'll right. need to do a sentence on that also. All right. Luke, what would you like me to know? Uh, a couple things, Judge. We reviewed the report. We reviewed the recommendation. Um, I think they indicated in the report, too, uh, that Mr. Hicks has a pretrial for his Indiana case there on um, Monday. Um, he very clearly and unequivocally states to me that um, this is going to be good for him to take a break from alcohol. And he recognizes how it's affected other people, how it's put other people in danger. Um, and in Autumn's report, too, he expressed the same uh, of these terrible decisions that he had made. Um, and the plan that they have put together, too, in terms of the probation, he can, um, there will be a little coordination required, but he can go to the Northeastern Center, uh, do a substance abuse evaluate, uh, assessment, do all the services that he would do if he lived in this county. Um, and he wants to do that. Included uh, in his Indiana case, when he will start his home detention, is that he will be drug tested understanding someone will come to his home and he will be drug tested. So there will be a little coordination. He can sign all those releases so that Autumn can have access uh, to those. Um, Judge, we, we read the recommendation. We're asking court to look the other way in terms of jail time. But we would ask the court uh, to put him on a term of probation, knowing that it will require some coordination. We appreciate that. Uh, Autumn is willing to do that um, and be involved. Not that she has to do it all. I think Mr. Hicks will do as much as he can in terms of the heavy lifting. Uh, but we do think that the recommendation is appropriate. And I believe my client wants to address the court as well. All right, I'll be frank. When I read this, I thought, I don't want this guy on probation. Um, and I'm gonna have some hard questions to ask here in a minute. Uh, Mr. Hicks, what would you like me to know? Uh, I, you know, it was never my intention to get behind the wheel and put anybody in danger that day. It was just, uh, I just poor decision making altogether. Uh, I really don't know what to say. It's, well, it's hard to know, it's, but um, it's more than poor decision making. And I was confused as to the facts because this arrest was at 8.30 in the morning on July 11th. And uh, all the information talks about you drinking from 8.30 in the morning to 8.45 at night and you're leaving work. And it wasn't clear whether you quit, got fired, just weren't working. Ms. Davis speaks to some of those issues in her recent email. So if I got it straight, you got arrested on July 11th, which was a very nice day. It was a Tuesday at 8.30 in the morning. And I think you spent all day Monday, July 10th, drinking. And I wasn't clear whether you actually went into work on July 11th, but you had a very high blood alcohol level, 0.28 at 8.30 in the morning. Um, and <clears throat> you were on bond for a drinking driving charge in LaGrange County. You got a driving suspended charge in LaGrange County in June. Um, <clears throat> and then this happened in July. And then you got a possession of a controlled substance in August in LaGrange County. Your license is suspended. It's a third offense drunk driving. You have an extremely high blood alcohol level. Your driving was terrible. 
you're on bond <clears throat> for a drinking driving charge and you got arrested subsequently on a drug charge. So I got some serious reservations about this. Um, Deborah, I got your email about 15 minutes ago from Autumn and then about one minute ago from you. I did have an opportunity to read it. What would you like me to know? I apologize, Your Honor, I'd send that to Judge Patterson. Thank you, you know, time we don't. Um... Well, Judge Patterson took the plea, well, was gonna take the plea, in fact, did take the plea, and it got rolled over to me because of sobriety court potential, but there's multiple problems, but the least of which is an Indiana resident, so he's not eligible for sobriety court. So yes. I was a little uninformed about what was what. And um, I, I wasn't planning on coming to the sentencing, um, so I put a pretty significant amount of um, writing uh, into the, the email. But I just want to point out a few things, and maybe this is uh, more for the defendant than the court, but I do take a lot of issue with the statements um, about the defendant's to Autumn when he met with her, that he's an occasional drinker. Um, you know, he only drank during a 45 minute period in Autumn's report, it says 8 a.m. to 8.45 a.m. on the date of the offense. Uh, he was, in fact, called in as a, a be on the lookout or a bolo. Uh, but that's not right because he got arrested at eight. I had to look at it again to make sure I had my time right. He got arrested at 8.30 in the morning on July 11th. Uh, it was 8.45, 8.50. Um, the, the PBT was like at 9.10. But it was in the a.m. Yes, it was a.m., yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. And so, so he wasn't drinking that day. You know, he um, told Autumn and his... Yes, he was. He said that he was drinking from 8 to 8.45 a.m. Yes, that that's correct. What's in my report is absolutely what you told me. All right, so he wasn't drinking 8.45 a.m. He had gone to work that All morning. right, so you're talking about... Okay, go ahead. Quit on his the, job, on the, walked on, out. On the 11th. Correct, All walked right. out. Said he had a bad day. Okay. Walked out of his job, had planned to go fishing that day, went and got alcohol, planned to go to the river, start had been to Sturgis, drinking on the way back, was pulled over. So th the way the chronological order in the report goes is exactly the way he told me it happened that day. But so he, didn't drink, that till, he didn't drink till 8 45 that night because no. he got arrested. No, everything yeah. says AM. It's all AM. It's all oh, AM. Okay. So, right. so there's no 12-hour well, so, periods. I don't think he had Bud Light. He couldn't drink that much alcohol I in just that amount wrote of time. in the report what I was advised. All right. So, so going back to right, that, um, a gentleman called in to 911. I listened to the 911 call this morning um, <clears throat> that this individual in this truck was all over the road. Uh, they believed him to be a drunk driver. And when the dispatcher asked, well, what makes you think that? He said, well, he ran up over the curb and he's uh, all over the road. And as uh, the dispatcher was trying to get the information they, uh, from him, he said, oh, oh, there's the police. And so he hung up. So the police officer was in the area, thankfully, where uh, the defendant was driving. So he got him immediately uh, after the call came in. So, uh, you know, I have a strong suspicion uh, that if, if, in fact, he was working that day, it wasn't his choice to leave um, due to his level of intoxication. I don't think any uh, work would want somebody uh, being there uh, if they're that intoxicated. And then later in the video, because uh, I did try to go through the entire video, um, he admitted that he had gone to work, but there was no work because they were on shutdown. They had been shut down for like four weeks. So, I mean, as the court knows, it's, it's not plausible to reach a 0.28 BAC in 45 minutes of consuming alcohol. It's also not plausible that he was as coherent as he was uh, in answering questions and, you know, monitoring what he's saying to make it most beneficial. Like, oh, I haven't drank since 11 o'clock the night before. And uh, no, that, that can of Bud Light that you see in my console that I included a picture of. Um, that's my spitter. And he did have chewing tobacco in his mouth. But he said it was 90% full. It was 90% full and it was that. a positive on the passive PBT and it mm -hmm. was plain old Bud Light in there when he poured it out. There wasn't a chew spit in it. So um, again, I wouldn't have known this. It wasn't in the report, but it was in the body cam, which was provided to the defense. 
uh, Officer Jimenez from Sturgis PD arrived to assist and made it even more frustrating uh, by telling Deputy Herman that this is the same individual who they dealt with the night before at Walmart uh, being what they believed was highly intoxicated, although he claimed he was having a diabetic issue. Um, but from what Officer Jimenez said, this individual lied about who was driving the vehicle and how he got there and some girl well, I was uh, yeah he has a wife and two children but the day before there was a girlfriend yeah and so there was some confusion about is is there a girlfriend is he lying about having a girlfriend or is he lying about it completely but at any rate there was no short Hispanic female that would have been driving that vehicle the way that the uh, seats were uh, at the time I don't know whatever results with that obviously didn't come into us. I think it was just a, somebody probably came and got him type of thing. But my suspicion is he's probably been drinking the entire night since Sturgis PD had contact with him. So with this again, he lied about having his ID on him at the beginning of the interaction with the deputy. Um, he's asked if he has an ID and he's rummaging through his shorts and he pulls out something and I suppose it's my, my key to my house. But after he's arrested, he magically has his ID in his pocket. Um, you know, he, he's been lying about a lot of things and uh, he lied about the open intox. Uh, he lied about the ID. He's done nothing to address his substance abuse problems that I can tell. Uh, as the court noted, he was on bond. I do want to note that I believe that the possession of marijuana in Indiana was actually an incident that occurred before his OWI that he was arrested on in January of 23. It just was recently where he pled to that marijuana charge. I did have contact after receiving this ticket uh, coming through. I, I contacted the LaGrange County Prosecutor's Office because I felt very strongly, uh, even not even knowing that he had this issue the night before, um, that they needed to know what was going on here. And apparently that then kind of caused them to take some action down there. Um, it's my understanding that he is still charged with the OWI in Indiana from January of 23, which is an aggravating factor to me that he admits that he drank after being arrested on this charge oh, the weekend after he he drank alcohol again and he's you know on bond for the second owi in a six month period a third owi overall uh, and on bond for the marijuana charge he's clearly not ready to take sobriety seriously um, he's a danger to the public driving around at 8 45 in the morning with a bac that's three times the legal limit he had no job at the time of meeting with the probation department, although he claimed he was going to fill out an application. So I don't know if he's working now. I question what he's been doing with his life since mid-July when this happened, as he surely hasn't gotten himself to end, into any treatment. So I'm requesting that the court take him into custody today, that he sit in custody in the St. Joseph County Jail until September, I believe it's September 28th, when he could be released to serve his period of detention in Indiana. I don't think using the resources of our probation department is beneficial in this case because he doesn't care to recognize the seriousness of his addiction and he's still got the pending charge in Indiana. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, as Luke said, Autumn, you were willing to do a probation. I'm not sure I am, but um, is there anything you wish to add? Well, after the prosecutors, I'm not sure there is, but I, I do think Mr. Hicks has a serious alcohol problem, even though he claims that him and his wife don't feel that he does. I think he does. He would um, he would highly benefit from a sobriety court program, but as courts already stated, he's an Indiana resident. He's got pending cases <coughs> in Lagrange. I'm I'll do whatever the court wants to do. I felt a probation would be highly highly warranted in in this with all these facts. And I was willing to work with him as much as I possibly can, leave a bunch of jail over his head, but I'll do whatever the court feels is necessary. But his 90 days in LaGrange County is he was aware that I would put a stop if he was on probation and I'd restart everything after he was up from the 90 days because I don't feel him being at home for 90 days is going to benefit anything on our probation, but I'll do whatever you want. Yeah. 
Now it says it's concurrent with two 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 four nine three. Yeah, disregard three. that. Don't I have trouble figuring it out, but it's concurrent with the open intox. Case. Correct. Twenty three thirteen oh six ST. All right, and and so that was one of the questions that Debbie's email helped clear up. Well, let's take care of that one. Twenty three one three zero six ST is a open intox charge. It was a 16 ounce Bud Light can that they said was 90% full. So I hope that wasn't 90% spit. I, Debbie said it was beer. So two days, credit two days, concurrent with the other case, 1304. And no fine and costs in that case. Which brings us to the drinking driving charge. It was a plea to an OUIL first. It's not a third because you weren't convicted of the Indiana charge before this. You were charged, but you weren't convicted. Ms. Davis brings up a real good question. What have you been doing since July 11th? Uh, I've been out looking for work. I was supposed to start at Winnebago. Um, they require a background check, no criminal history in the last five years. I blew that out of water. So that Winnebago thing isn't about to transact? No, it's right. not going to happen. But I mean, have you gone to an AA meeting? Have you talked to a counselor? Have you done anything to address no, any of this? All right. Well, Autumn's right. You could certainly benefit from the intensive probation of, of uh, sobriety court. But according to you, you don't even have a problem. Uh, I, have, I have a problem, Your Honor. I just He doesn't really yeah, drink a lot. Yeah. I would estimate he drinks alcohol four times a month. I don't know what was going on, but you were having a real bad time July 10th and 11th. Uh, I don't know. You do have diabetes, which this isn't helping that at all. Um, you're killing yourself. Um, and... You've got a number of arrests this year. Uh, the oil while in Indiana, driving suspended in Indiana, the drug charge in Indiana, and in this case. Um, I don't know what happened. If you went to work that morning, you were drunk when you went to work. So I don't know if you got fired when you showed up drunk. Or, just, I'm sorry. Go I ahead. just went in and got my tools and left. Okay. I didn't want to do that. I don't know. All right. So you just got your tools and left. And did you tell anybody you quit or you just walked no, out the I door? I just walked back to the truck and went home. All right. What precipitated that? I uh, just uh, stress, uh, burnout. Uh, all right. Well, I don't know what was going on the night before at Walmart, but I suspect you drank a very large amount of alcohol the day and the evening before and then started all over again in the morning. Uh, I've seen it. And it's a huge red flag when someone's a two, three. That's almost three times the legal limit. That means they have a high alcohol tolerance and they have an alcohol substance abuse disorder. When I see it at 8.30 on a Tuesday morning, that raises a few more red flags. And when it's beer, you have to drink an awful lot of beer 
to get to that amount of blood alcohol level. Uh, and, uh, and then your statement is you don't really drink that much, um, but you do. And I don't really want you on a probation. You got this other thing going on. Um, and uh, you have two days credit. I'm going to order 32 days jail credit to leaving 30 days to serve. You got enough problems. I'm going to waive the fine, which would be $500. There's a $75 crime victims rights fee, a $50 state minimum fee, a $100 screening fee, $150 attorney fee, $200 restitution to the sheriff's department. Um, let's add that up. I see how good you are, Frank. Thank you, I get five seventy five. Let me try again. Seventy five plus fifty plus one hundred plus one fifty plus two hundred. Five seventy five. Frank was over billing you. Right, right. Let's put my fee in that too, sir. <laughs> the bailiff oversight fee. <laughs> uh, nine. I'm going to make that due by 12 31 23. Um, you're just, you. there are ultimate lots of different sentencing goals, but this one's punishment. You were suspended. You were on bond, you lied to the police, you were very dangerous driving, you continued to drink after the fact, and um, and you have done nothing to address your problem since July, not one thing. So we're gonna give you 30 or so days of forced sobriety. Um, and then you can go to L. Lagrange. Lagrange County and start your sentence there. How'd you get here today? I drove. Mm. On a suspended license? No, I have a license. I've had a license since August 10th. It um, got reinstated. All right. Oh, Fair okay. enough. Well, it's gonna you're gonna lose it. Um. All right. Uh, you have to call somebody to do something with your car. You can go with the officer. They give you the envelope regarding the fine. Oh, he's he's not mine. I'm not even going to look to see whether he has a valid license. So, <laughs> hope for the oh, best. Thank you. 